Hey guys, welcome to Cubase. My name is Ellie, also known as Tone Shifters. I'm actually a hardstyle music producer from Australia, currently living in the Netherlands. But today I'm going to be showing you how to build a hardstyle kick drum using Cubase and the Destroyer plugin. Okay, so let's look at how we can build a hardstyle kick. You would start with a uh, some kind of drum machine, either a 909 or an 808. The, the main idea is that, that you have a tail that, that you can tune and you, it will comprise of a punch and a tail. Like any kick, when you see it, it's a, it's a waveform that, you know, looks a little bit like, like this. That's what, what an, an, a 909 or an 808 would look like. Once you have this, you can um, then start the process of making the kick. And the process involves a lot of distortion and a lot of EQ. But you've got to do it in a way that you're not over distorting the kick, but at the same time, you're able to use that distortion just enough so that you can create those extra harmonics in the kick. What do I mean by this? Let's have a look. I can just load a sampler. I've got a sampler already here, but normally you would just right click here and add sampler track. You don't have to give it a name if you don't want to. And there it is. Basically it loads your sampler down here. It's quite a simple thing and uh, very easy to use. You know, I use the sampler for my uh, claps, for my snares. It's just a really easy plugin to use. And then it means that you can trigger things in MIDI. At the same time, uh, you can swap out those samples for something brand new, but you still have the arrangement in your track. Then you can literally just grab your 909, drag and drop. It's easy as that. And then, uh, yeah, you can just play. You can go up the scale. And now we can begin the process of manipulating uh, the kick. The first thing you need to do is distort now the destroyer plugin is is such a such an amazing distortion for hardstyle in particular and why i will explain it to you the technical reason is because it's called an asymmetrical distortion which allows you to distort your for example if you have these waveforms over here allows you to, to distort this part of the signal differently to this part of the signal. A conventional distortion will just distort everything at once and will distort them equally, which is a symmetrical distortion. But with an asymmetrical distortion, it allows you to distort these positive values separate to these negative values, which allows you to get different harmonics and different sounds out of whatever you're trying to distort. In our case, it's the kick. If I was to add this 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 destroyer on this is basically just the stock settings i've i've turned on here it's just distorting it a little bit a little bit of distortion a little bit of saturation which is kind of what you want in the beginning then you want to add a heavy distortion and then you want another distortion on top of that the the way you create the character in the kick is by eqing in between two heavy distortions let me show you. If I go here now and I turn on these EQs, you will hear a huge difference. And you can see that it's already sounding like a hard start kick. If I make a if I make a B sample, a B version of this EQ here so I don't ruin what I've done. This is just one version of the EQ. I can change this and it's going to give me a completely different character also pretty cool if I turn these EQs off it basically just sounds like a really distorted 909 kind of early hardcore from the 90s or you know uh, jump style um, those kind of genres used to use these kind of style kicks where it, where it goes, where it becomes interesting with the destroyer is that you can ch you, you start to change the symmetry and it starts to change the sound. So if I turn this EQ back, just the first EQ, you 
you can see that I'm changing the sound of the, the kick completely just by moving the symmetry. And that's why the Destroyer is such a powerful plugin for hardstyle kicks. <laughs> On top here, you have this uh, EQing function, which allows you to um, set a, an EQ band before your distortion. So if you want to cut some of the lows out, you can play with those settings until you have a kick that you're really happy with or is just right for you. I can revert back to my previous setting. So actually, if you combine using the distortion symmetry and changing the whole EQ around, you know, boosting frequencies, cutting frequencies, that you have such an immense amount of control in shaping the kick that you want to have. And it's such a powerful tool to, you know, create these different layers and different kind of kicks. The possibilities are endless. And this is why the Destroyer is such a powerful tool for building kicks. Afterwards, I would usually just add a little bit of uh, um, EQing or reverb at the end just to give a nice shimmering or uh, a ring or a tail for the kick. In this case, I've put a multiband compressor just to control some of those highs. Um, but you don't need to use a multiband compressor. For me, because I'm still in the creation process, sometimes the multiband compressor will help if I'm boosting something really like too much, then you know it'll bring down some of those levels with the multiband compressor. That's without it. That's with it on. So if I tweak my kick, then the multiband compressor will be set and then I can, it will kind of adjust so that the high end stays a little bit consistent. But then I would just put a little bit of an EQ at the end, which because I found it was a little bit too sibilant, a little bit too much high end. So I just took it down a little bit, you know, let's say uh, 10 dB, but that's at 20K. And this is just a, a band, which I've put right at the end. I didn't want to use a high shelf because I wanted this kind of roll off. So that's why I used the peak with a narrow Q. The Q value here shows you how steep the, the peak becomes. That's basically how you get the hard stock kick. And from this, you can start to export it. You will create a new uh, a file. I can use the render, render in place function again. Uh, I'll make this loop size a little bit bigger just because we have a little bit of a reverb tail there. And I will right click here, render in place, render with my current settings. And that's an export of the hardstyle kick that we just made. I can normalize this process, normalize. I want it to be at the maximum, which it is at zero. And this is actually a pretty nice start for a kick. And, you know, the next step would be to test, uh, does it pitch well? So you could literally just, the way we pitch kicks in hardstyle, we don't pitch the whole kick. You have to cut the tail just over here. Then you, you have uh, two separate files here. You've got the punch, which is what we call the tock. And then you have uh, the tail, which is the distorted part and has the character of the kick. And this is what people uh, consider as the, the baseline or um, what you would tune the kick to. So in this case, I'm just say I wanted to pitch it up three semitones. I will right click again, can go to process, pitch shift, select a new version. And then I will put three semitones over here, press enter, and then the waveform will ad adjust accordingly. So if I listen to that now, Pitching quite nice. That's two semitones. Let's go up to say six semitones. This is pitching without time correction, by the way. 
it sounds like it's getting shorter um, because the character is closing over. But the, you can see actually the kick is still quite long. If I turn time correction on, the best algorithm to use for kick for kick pitching is solo musical. This one allows you to have the best time correction, especially for your tail, because then it, it doesn't create many artifacts. <laughs> So that's just a quick demonstration on how to pitch your hardstock kicks afterwards. Normally you would take this kick and you would put it in, in your track, EQ it a little bit if it needs uh, some low end or some high end dependent on your mix. And from there, it's, it's, it's never a, a finished kick, you know, in, in, in hard style, it's always like, or maybe I can, you know, maybe you make a new track and then it's like, maybe I can add another layer on the kick. Maybe I can go back to the 909 create some different layers, change the character of the kick, or make a different punch for the kick. Uh, you can go back into the 909 and get rid of that decay so that it's just the punch, and you can do some really crazy things with the EQ and get completely different layers for that. So, I hope you guys learned about building your own hardstyle kick today using Cubase and the Destroyer plugin. To be honest, I think it's one of the most powerful plugins that you can use. Combine that with the symmetry and you know the EQing before the distortion and all those little things inside the Destroyer that can give you all the control that you need to make your own hardstyle kick. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.